Chapter 1. The New Alphas Five wolves, alphas in training, stand side by side, shoulder by shoulder, flank by flank. This was a race at the Eastern Pack, a race to let the Alpha School instructor know who's the fastest runner. It was known as the Isaac Test. Here, a legend begins his journey against the odds. Four, five, three, two, one, go! The five participants ran as fast as they could, daring themselves not to pant. Smiling with their tongues sticking out of their mouths, breathing the oxygen-rich air of the forest, hearing the sounds of intelligent like life bounce back and forth in the familiar pattern all wolves know. Top speed, 60 miles per hour, but Stormfast was going 70. Of course, there could only be one winner. That winner was none other than the legend himself, a wolf practically born for speed. When he reached the finish line between the distinct two pine trees, it took two minutes before second place came. Ha <laughs> ha! Beecha! he yelled as Garth crossed. Garth was an orange wolf for turquoise eyes. He was the son of the pack leader, the most respected Eastern Beta. In time, he will be the next in line when he marries. He was also Stormfast's cousin. How do you do that? Are you even panting? Garth asked, puzzled. No, I just have a gift, answered Stormfast, who proudly grinned among himself. He was a handsome wolf who was black with white on the tip of his tail and paws. He was the fastest wolf of possibly the world, a gift that comes in handy. I wish I was gifted like you, said Stone, Stormfast's best friend and adopted brother. He was a shy, friendly, superstitious wolf who had white fur with light brown spots. He looked up to his brother like a pup does to his father. Who cares if he won, muttered Scar, a brown male who was maimed at birth. Tony cares, because now he's going to know who's the fastest runner, informed the instructor named Smokey, another brown wolf. He was a tall, old, and ambitious. He was one of the Eastern Pack's greatest alphas, mostly known for winning the Great Wolf Games three times in a row. Thank you, Smokey. Now, all of you, listen. Our pack leader, Tony, will give you various tasks that you'll have to listen carefully and do exactly. Tony was the current pack leader of the pack known as the Eastern Pack. Their rival pack, known as the Western Pack, had been their enemies for more than a century, in dog years. Their rivalry had definitely made its standoff in the society. Wait, what do you mean he will give us a task now? We're not alphas yet, said Claus, an orange female wolf known for having a fierce personality. That's right, Smokey smiled. Since today is the first day of spring, you all are known as alphas. They all cheered. It was a milestone to complete one's alpha training in the winter and become an alpha, which is the supreme rank of the social order of wolves. Woohoo! Not a bait anymore, shouted Garth. Glad that's over, yelled Stormfast. Glad winter's over too, added Stone. So who's ready for the Moonlight Howl? The Moonlight Howl was a celebration held yearly on the first day of spring to unite young couples by howling at the moon, signaling the start of the mating season. It would be held on a high mountain known as Moonlight Howl Rock. Both east and west participated since the border they shared went through it. I know I am, said Stormfast. I've been working on my howls lately. So have I, bragged Garth. You howl? asked Claus. Of course I do. Maybe not as good as all of you. Whatever. Scar said, not interested. Well, you should know that I got a date with the Western Pack's leader's daughter for th Everybody was confused. Wait, I thought Easterns couldn't howl with Westerns, just like the Alphas and Omegas. They, those were a couple of the Pack laws of the United Regions, which were the Confederation of Regions brought together to keep order. It was ran by the Constitutional Committee, a group of wolves who govern all the Packs within the Regions. Well, the rules apply for all of you. You know that speech that Winston told us last autumn? Winston was the current Western Pack leader. Yeah, what about it? said Scar. Well, he told us that if me and his daughter marry, it would unite the Packs. Why would we need to? asked Stormfast. Because caribou is disappearing from our pack. It could be the only way to end our little famine. That makes sense. I guess that's why I haven't seen a caribou track in a while. I hear the Westerns are hoarding all the meat, snickered Scar. No, they wouldn't do that. The Westerns are known for their kindness, said Garth. I agree, said Stormfast. I'm glad you both think of peace, said Smokey. Just then, Tony walked up to them. 
As leader, he must check up on the new generation. He had a frail-looking body, with a beard under his muzzle. His voice was godlike, scaring even the toughest of alphas in his command. Are these the new alphas, Smokey? Yes, sir. Tony then turned his attention to the graduates. Well, congrats. I hope you all had a great winter. So, Smokey, who won the race? The legend, of course. Stormfast? Again? Wow. Stor Scar rolled his eyes. Well, Stormfast, Stone, Claws, Scar, and my son Garth, I hope you are all ready for the life ahead of you, especially you, Garth. You will be following in my journey of being pack leader. Ah, I remember my time in Alpha School, and, and, my, and my dad said those exact words. His name, as you might recall in your history class, was Bronx. I also remember what I, when I did my Isaac test. I didn't win it, though. My brother Owen won it. Dang, I'll never forget it. He paused. Stormfast? Yeah? Just to let you know, your father Owen was a great wolf. I know he died a moon ago along with your mom in the great blizzard. He said the only thing he could give you was his speed.